How we sound top? Check on your phone. Check the live. Go on YouTube on your phone. I can't it. I can't it. I Let's wait for a few minutes, people, to join, and then. Okay, we'll make a start, and if anybody is watching now, if you could just let us know the sounds, okay, that'd be fantastic. Start, make a start. All right, thanks so much for everyone joining uh, online. Just give you a bit of time there just to, uh, to all, for all for you to join. Uh, just on a mic check and sound is all good, so sorry about the delay. Uh, here in Aquarian Gardens in the showroom behind me, we've got Pavel here. Um, he's come over from Northern Ireland, uh, incredibly talented escaper. Um, yeah, we're going to be doing a workshop for about four hours, and Pavel's going to show you. Uh, how to set up an aquascape Pavel style from start to finish. Um, so we'll have a little bit of a break in between. So this, this live stream might be split up into two sections. Um, yeah, we're, we've got a crowd here. Everyone's raring to go. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And um, yeah, I'm really excited. So I'll hand you over to Pavel. Um, enjoy. I'm just going to pass you the mic. Got it okay? Cool, yeah. So please give a warm welcome to Pavel. Yeah, hello everyone and uh, welcome. I'm really honored to be here today. I'm, I see many friendly faces. I'm really honored basically that you made your journey here to see me aquascaping this aquarium. And thank you, Dave, for inviting me over. Yeah, I'll uh, punish you with an ugly scape so you can look <laughs> after it for one year. No, no, I'll do my best to escape it. Um, let me tell you something about myself first, introduce myself. Um, I come from Slovakia originally. 
small country in Central Europe. Uh, I moved to Northern Ireland 18 years ago after I finished my studies in university. Originally, I thought it was going to be only for one year, you know, just to learn better English, improve, get some work experience, and then go back to school, finish my master's degrees. But I didn't happen, as it does in life. And 18 years later, I'm here. Um, in Slovakia, I grew up in a small region with very nice national parks, very picturesque mountains, forests, and streams. So I was very close to nature from a very early age. And I think that's what got me in aquascaping in a later age that I didn't realize at the beginning. But uh, yeah, the yeah the relationship with nature and the love for it. You know, I like going for a walk, explore the nature, see all the nice small little things that we see we don't realize many times. And uh, that's what got me in the hobby. I was eight years ago. It started normally as I was a fish keeper at the beginning keeping fish, not focusing really on plants, and I, but I wanted something live and green, so I started introducing plants. And as it was happening, I uh, started learning about them by researching, and as we all do, we find these amazing videos of Nature Aquarium Gallery from Japan, on Takashi Amano and ADA. And that's what got me inspired, yeah. And then watching lots of videos of other aquascapers, professional aquascapers who were creating nice layouts, and it was very inspiring, yeah. So I'm not a professional aquascaper. I'm a hobbyist like yourselves. I've uh, been doing it for, I'd say, six years now on the a little bit higher level. I started focusing um, on contests with the tanks I create. And this is always on the back of my mind when I create a tank. I create it with a vision of having it for contests. So when I build my aquarium, it's usually situated or layout is designed so you look at the tank from the front no matter where it is in the room yeah but you don't have to apply this technique because you can create the layout that suits your your vision in your home where it sits in your tank in your room and the way you're looking at it from what point of view so this is a very important factor to consider when you're building your aquascape today, today i'm going to be building aquascape for the front view so i think it's a uh, the most uh, used, I would say, the layout and design concept with the V-shape, concave, where you have two strong elements on the sides with an open space going through the center. Um, in many aquascapes, even in the contest, you see probably 70-80% in the top 100 in IAPLC will be concave composition because it's the most impressive, in my opinion. It gives, draws your attention straight away when you look at it and you see it clear vision clear endpoint, which is very important. And yeah, that will be the idea. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about sponsors. Life Aqua and ProDibio. I'm the ambassador for the both brands. So today we are going to be using this beautiful, very slick and modern design, uh, Prime Pro X900, suspended from Life Aqua aluminum alloy stand, which is fixed to the cabinet. The aluminum stand is designed to hold this light also Master Pro. Master Pro is very heavy. It's like five and a half kilograms weight. So this one is quite heavy as well. It's 3.5 kilograms. And this is, this is because of dissipation and uh, transfer, heat transfer technology that Life Aqua applies to their products. Uh, you will never see them using fans building the unit because they don't believe, you know, it's maybe not the best way of cooling the uh, LEDs, you know, fans can fail. It will burn your LEDs. The light is gone. So uh, that's why they try to pay more attention to heavier, high quality product. The the weight is caused by the radiator that's built, built inside. That's cooling 144 three in one LED chips in this unit. It's 108 watt of power and three. Uh, 3,600 lux. So it's quite powerful unit. At the minute you see the bit of yellowish tent and uh, rendition coming from the light because I have it preset for this workshop so you can see the changes during when working on a tank. Uh, it's starting with the sunrise. You can fully control it with your phone on the app and you can change the presets 
the colors you like. You can change the intensity. You can do various ramp up, ramp down, your day cycle, photo period. You know, you can program it fully. The manufacturer provides actually five or six, I think, scenes that are in the, in the app preset for you. You can use sunrise, sunset, a natural scene. That's what I would like to use. It's more natural colors. Mm -hmm. And there's a vivid and also palm growth. And I can maybe show you so quickly just to see what they look like. Um, I'm getting all these notifications now. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, okay, so the Prime Pro X900. So now this is, this is the sunrise. Let's go on. This is now on the 68% intensity. I'll put it to 100. This is now natural. And you see the vivid, a bit more reddish. It's probably hard to see now in the video, especially for you, because there's no plants, no water in the tank. But you can probably see it in my hand. And then there's a plant growth, which will be more greener. And the sunset. It has a nice feature that it starts up very smoothly. It doesn't scare your fish. Like some units might have an issue that you switch the light on. If you switch the light on too sudden, fish might startle and jump out of your open top tank, which we don't like. See, and also at night when it goes down, it goes very smooth. Uh, there's also a very nice feature which is called ultra bright, and it's very, very, very bright as you can see now. And that's good for photography if you want to use it for the contest, you can use this light. And uh, the more light you put on the tank, you can take better quality of photo. You can uh, have better exposure and use lower ISO, which makes your photo nice, crisp, and sharp. And then there's also ripple light. You can't see it now, but you will be able to see that after we finish at the end. And it's not in the center, it's on the side for, this, for the reason that it's more natural. You can barely see the moon shining straight on from the center, right? Which is a nice feature. I like that. And there's only one because we don't have two moons in the sky, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Very nice. I, li I like this feature a lot. And yeah, it's good. So, yeah. I think we can maybe start escaping. I'll just put it back on the natural. See, it's going nice and smooth. This light will disappear. And let's start 84. So now it's on 84%, but this will gradually go because even if you play with your light, you change settings, whatever, it will find its way to go to your preset schedule eventually. So, uh, the second sponsor of this event is Prodibio. I'm also Prodibio ambassador. I've been using their products for the last, I would say, two, three years in all my tanks. The great results. It's a French biochemical company. Uh, they spe originally specialized in bacteria and the treatments for the water of fresh marine tanks as well. And the most recently, recent, maybe it's been around for a while, maybe three, four years, they have the full planted tank range. It's very comprehensive. and. Uh, Covers all you need for your aquascape you need. This is the Aquaterra Plus. That's designed for inert substrates. So you can use it under sand or gravel if you don't have an aqua soil, because the aqua soil is usually complete plant substrate. You don't need to use any other nutrients or additions to it. But for this setup, I would like to use this just to give that extra boost of nutrients so we can then dose more leaner after. Uh, because I will try to use lots of stem plants at the back, and if you dose leaner with less nitrogen, you promote slower growth, but they will still sustain a nice healthy growth from the nutrients from the base they get through the roots. And you can get a better coloration on your plants, which is very important. At the beginning, I will I, I'm pretty much sure that they will grow really fast because they will have lots of nutrients from the soil and from this substrate, which is fine. We can 
overlook that, you know, for the first couple of months. And then eventually, with the linear dosing, they will start slowing down and create nice color. And especially after a couple of trims, because if you trim once, twice, it will slow down the growth a little bit. It will stay longer under the light that you provide with the highlight. And then they will change the pigmentation to more red coloration, especially in the rotalus. Many people, I think, fail with rotalus for that reason. But they use estimative index method, which is very rich and heavy. You overdose every day, your nutrients, and then plants grow really fast. And they don't stay on the light long enough to get that nice color or basically just get burned. But yeah, let's get to it. Every, any questions, by the way, right light or any, what I'm talking so far? Nope, okay. That means I'm doing well. <laughs> okay. Uh, so oh, I'm gonna use that only for the background mainly. Tell you better because what do you think of they properly? Yeah, I think it's a fair price. You know, what, what do you get for the quality? You know, I'm not going to compare to any other brands because it's not fair to anybody. Uh, but yeah, it's cost. It's a re reasonably priced, I would say. The bacteria that comes in the vials, they provide with the substrate, contains the uh, uh, bactericid soil and a nutri soil. Why is the bacteria important in your substrate? You know, you getting a, the, the bacteria will grow eventually, naturally over time, but this will speed everything up for you, and it's very helpful because bacteria breaks down nutrients that is contained in the substrate um, to readily available compounds for the plants to use easily because it, if it happens that bacteria will take time to evolve and grow and mature in your substrate then plants can't really utilize the power, the power from the nutrients and grow but with this you can speed it up considerably and also every bag of soil that we will use later comes with the bacteria soil which also contains the same stuff Bacteria and then the nutrients for bacteria to feed bacteria to stay healthy and grow and multiply and do the job. Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. There is a technique that you can use by simply pouring the dechlorinated water in the tank first very small layer, like maybe half an inch or five millimeters. And then you do the bacteria in the, in the water, you mix it, and then you put soil over it, that sucks it all up. And it's all nice spread evenly. But I don't like to use that because I don't like to work with a wet soil. Yeah, it's quite messy. And if you're trying to work on the hardscape harder, longer, take your time with it, it's better to use it dry. What I use after is like put it in the spray bottle. And before I start planting, I will wet the soil and that will go slowly in the soil the water with the bacteria and it will do the same job for you so we don't have to use that at the beginning you can wait until you're happy with your hardscape you think it's all perfect and done and you want on a plant then you can use the bacteria So first, what I always like to do is first set the substrate first to create a, a base for building your hardscape so you don't really necessarily have to touch the glass with the rocks or if you use something heavy, you know, and it gives you a bit more stability as well for 
your creation. You can play with it better because it doesn't bind on the flat surface of the glass. I have a little bit of left here, so I'm going to use that now. See, yeah, I'm deliberately not putting it too close to the surface in the front because this is going to be hardscape here, and I want to use a bit of a sand. And I don't want to leach the nutrients. I don't want. I don't want nutrients to leach from the soil, basically, which can cause the problem long term. So you're going to try. You need to try and have it covered well. One open bag here, we'll just get rid of it's so Prodidio Aqua Grove soil. It's a Japanese, it's collected in Japan. Uh, it's heat treated under I think 1500 Celsius degrees to create that structure, you know, and uh, also kill everything that could be harmful to your system in your tank. So it has a very nice natural grain, one to three millimeters. Which I like. I prefer this to, let's say, a very even same grain size, which to me doesn't look really natural. You know, I think this is better for the look. So I don't know how many bags I'm gonna use here today. I think maybe three. We'll see. We'll see how you get on. In my experience, the standard will be maybe three bags of soil. It depends how high you go at the back for this size of aquarium, uh, which is actually, I forgot to tell you, it's uh, 90 long, 50 deep, and 45 high. It's a great aquarium because it gives you extra depth. Usually 90p standard size is 45 by 45. This will give you extra five centimeters in the depth. It, you can create extra layer and deep and perspective in your scape. So yeah, that's what you like in aquascaping. The deeper, the better. What times do you use, guys? At home, you usually use open top, yeah? It's rimless, OptiWhite. Do, do, would you prefer deeper tanks or more shallow tanks? Deeper, yeah. You mean the, the shallow, the height? Yeah. No, I would love to. Yeah, because I, I like the look of it. Yes, it's yeah. very beautiful. I don't have much space at home. I have 120, 90. So two tanks, one in the living room, one in the kitchen. And But I'm considering to getting third one. And it's going to be either 60 centimeter tank or shallow. Yeah. But I'm more inclined to shallow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've done your one yourself, yeah? All shallow, okay. Here, maybe extra chair for someone. No, good. All right. Oh, 
so I can sit down and watch. All right. <laughs> Is there many of you entering a, a contest every year or haven't don't even tried not once? once? Did you? Did you? Did you? <laughs> it doesn't matter really, I think. You know, it's I don't think it's about ranking. You know, it's nice to be positioned high, but you know, it's I th I, th I think it's more about that you enjoy the process. Yeah. And you see maybe you can ranking doesn't matter at the end of the day. Why do you think that the UK scene that more, a lot more people entering, or is placing higher than I think, I think, for me, I think if we had local contest here, first of all, there would be more people up to it, you know, because they will be, they could, they could practice, you know, photography, growing the tongue and preparing it for that contest. And then maybe that will encourage them to go internationally as well. But it's basically in the nature of people maybe as well. They don't like entering contests. They want to have a nice tongue. I'm sure there is lots of very nice tongues in the, in the UK. Yeah. But they're not ending up in the contest for some reason. Sorry? Do you own photographs? Yeah, I do sometimes, but I'm not good at it. But to, I'm not too good at it. So when I do final photo, I call my friend to help. He's much better, much better camera. And then, yeah, it's much better. I, I can take a photo, yeah, but I will struggle more. And I recommend anyone, if you can, you know, use a friend. And also, with two people shooting the tank, it's much easier. Because one can focus on the photography, another one can chase the fish. <laughs> and do other stuff, you know. So. I mean, for, for my friend, like photographer, is very, I would say, he loves it because it's something new for him. He says, oh, I haven't done that before. It's, it's completely different, you know, because you're taking photo in the water. It's, there's water creates that, you know, maybe barrier or something. You can get, you have to look after, you have to worry about the reflections from everywhere. Everything has to be blocked. And the lights from anywhere in the room, especially, you have basically better if you shoot in the dark room. And yeah. He, he likes it. He likes the challenge. <laughs> do you use a hairdryer to disturb the water? Yeah, I use the hairdryer and sometimes the last photo I did, with the, I used the simple, cheap uh, cooler. Okay. I placed it here on the back of the tank and it creates nice, like a e nice even and very gentle ripple. You can still see your reflection on the surface, which is sometimes good, you know, you, can, you, wanna, you wanna show them sometimes, but they're not too in your eyes. Not too distracting, so yeah, it's good sometimes as well. And it's handier because you can just place it on your rim of the tank, it does the job, it's quiet. I do, yeah, I do sometimes. I try not to too much, you know, because then you're losing the size of your scape. But five centimeters, if it's needed, yeah, to get a better shape on your stem plants at the back or better reflection on the surface or something like that, yeah, it's very handy. Sometimes a little bit of water drop creates big change in aquascape, yeah, in a photo. Good, good question. So, yeah, let's start. I, uh, I decided to use this new, very trendy type of wood. Which is quite new to UK market, I think. Uh, called dragonwood, especially you know, for the, some reason, because you see the the size and the shape and the texture of it, it reminds dragonstone. The combination with the dragonstones will be actually very good, you know, for the obvious reasons. But uh, I'll I'll try and create a bit of contrast by using elderly stone. Which I'm actually very impressed with. I never worked with it either. It's very, very nice. It's got a nice grayish, uh, brownish textures as well on some of the rocks. And from what I saw there, you're very lucky, guys, here in the Aquarium Gardens to have this shop, you know, very close to you. Great selection. I couldn't see the ugly rock from that type in that selection. I don't know if it's just uh, that amazing rock or they were lucky to get it that way.
Uh, usually, yeah, from the local shop. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not lucky that way. <laughs> well, there's just, there's just good, good, decent shops, you know, and they can still order for you if you want, you know. Speak to them and they will order. For them. I collect as well. Only rocks, if I can. And uh, yeah, I uh, put beside the wood, you know, and I instantly like the way it worked. Was working with it, with with the shape of the wood and the texture and the color of the stone as well. Do you prefer working with wood or rocks, or just both? Both usually, and I like wood more than the, let's say just iwagumis. I haven't actually tried personally Iwagumi, like a pr proper old school, you know, simple Iwagumi using just maybe three or five stones. If I was maybe using stone, I would try to create more diorama aquascape with it, uh, more like a mountain range or stuff, stuff like that. Yeah. For me personally, I think Iwagumi is very hard because you need to get it right because there is it's very minimal, so the balance has to be perfect with the rocks. Yes, yesterday I had a, we play in a dojo in the escape room there, in the hard escape room. But it's very hard to remember what you do there, you know. It's, I, I, I find it difficult. But it's good to have just an idea, you know. Yeah, this is better. <laughs> yeah, the closer the better. <laughs> Yeah, you will be amazed in the contest layout, how close we go to the front glass. It's, uh, yeah, it can be difficult to maintain, but to use the toothbrush, you know, in those tight spaces. Yeah. And usually if they have a clear the shadow there, there is no light, it uh, doesn't grow algae on the glass. It stays cleaner. It thinks a lot about shadows when you scrape it. Last couple of years, yes, I try to. Because I think it's very important to clear the contrast. Not just from the shadow and light contrast, but also from near and far, you know, the big and small, you know, I've, I've seen, I think many people have seen the George Sim seminar in like Green Aqua, and I thought this was bright, groundbreaking for me and myself as well. I think after that, watching that video, the seminar, I got better. I paid more attention to what he said, you know, what he was actually saying about the concept and the, co the perspective, all the rules that you use in uh, the contest tanks, what they look for, the judges, you look for, and yeah, it made sense. Yeah, I never really considered shadows before watching. That. Yeah, because yeah. you want to grow plants. Yeah. Yeah, if yeah. you focus on plants, you say, what can I grow in the shadow? Yeah, you put Anubias there, yeah? But sure, Anubias looks nice in the shadow. So, do you consider the water flow when you're creating your layouts, or do you create your layouts yeah. first and then work out the flow? Yeah, you think about it when you're building it, but uh, eventually, at the end, you know, if I see that. I maybe did a mistake there. I tried to put extra pump, like a small, small wave maker somewhere in the corner, the other side. You know, in the bigger tanks it doesn't really matter because you use two filtration, two filters. So if you have one here, one there, it will create that motion. In the tank like this, if you only, you only use one one filter, you can have maybe if you're blocking here your uh, flow on this side, and it's all flowing from here, they might get stuck here sometimes. So. What I will try to do today, I'm going to try to cleave the open space here, so the water goes there. 
but there is no problem to put something here small and create a motion again this direction all right Yeah, so, so th this rock here will be for me very important for the structure of the wood to keep it in place. I'll try and glue this. I'm going to start my building the other side a little bit just to give me an idea where to place it and create a balance. My time. If, I think many times it's more important, you know, to have an idea beforehand. If you have an idea, it's very uh, you can move faster with your idea. And then obviously you have a hardscape collected for it. You know, you have it all stacked up, stashed. I mean, when you start working, then um, usually I would say like three evenings. You know, I usually try to do it uh, the night time, maybe when the kids are in sleep. You have a nice and quiet environment, and you know you focus on that. And I think this is the best part of the hobby creation process, because you know it boosts your creativity, and you get in that uh, well, how do you call it mindset, that, that flow where you just focus on that aquascape and nothing else around you, and you're in your own element, basically. And I think this is the the, the best part for me, creation process. It's what, what it's all about. And then obviously when you're growing your tongue and it's maturing and you're seeing it evolving, and it's also very satisfying. What does it look like so far, guys? Is it getting any shape?
on her skates to the uh, I I get lazy after. <laughs> yeah, I take like a maybe two weeks break. I don't think plants after photo. Uh, it's getting overgrown, but then after that you trim it again, and you can, I keep it maximum maximum maybe one year. Yeah, yeah, or sometimes shorter. Yeah, if I keep it for one year, it's good going for me because I will try to maybe strip it and already. If I have the blank canvas, it forces me to create something new. If I keep it going for long, 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 then it's harder to focus on a new thing yeah. for me. How much time do you generally spend maintaining your tanks after the initial period? Uh, initial, after initial period, it's just water changes. You don't really do much with the plants, but after, if, you, if you're getting mature, you're trimming and shaping it, you know, I could spend about three hours, four hours on my contest tank week, weekly, which is not, not too bad, you know. Right, I think I'm gonna start gluing some stuff before I have to build it higher after. So I need to start securing it. Do you glue your hardscape, guys? Yeah, always, always. yeah, I, I, I glue it too. The gluing hardscape is not only for, to make uh, wood stop floating, but it's also for maintenance stability. You know, you're trimming a plant, you knock it over, you don't wanna destroy it. So it's good to have it secure. Liquid super glue and the cotton wool or paper towel. No, I was, but I might actually start this good. Yeah. Did you use it before? Yeah, I just I was watching some um, when you're building like roof scapes because it's got like, heavy rocks and things. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I started using it in my uh, scapes and it worked really well. Mm, that's good. I need to try, yeah. And it also cleans the surface, right? The spray before. I don't know. Uh, I just show the spray. Yeah, oh, okay. Oh, you spray it after? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah if, you what you're gluing, if you want to clean up plants, it's quite good to spray on the surface before and then have the glue on the plant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good idea, that. Yeah. So cotton wool is very good for filling up the gap between the rock and wood because it's not really always even. And then if you use a, a liquid super glue, it absorbs it in the cotton wool and creates that joint. If I was gluing the rocks only, I would be using sand to cover it. But because I'm using the wood and rocks, it's better to cover it with just soil. And then you cover it with plants later on. Nobody will be able to see that. Yeah, yeah. 
See, it's already hard. But we need to create uh, more connections where we can do that. Just for the peace of mind. <laughs> it's better, you know, get at least two free spaces places. I hardly use it once. And I did, uh, but I would recommend you know, to use it outside of the tank. You know, if you have like a maybe dojo and do it all there, build a structure and then put it in the tank. Because expanding foam, it's hard to control when it comes out of the tube. It keeps running, you can't stop it, you know? So, uh, it's better use it outside. I used it once in China when doing live contest and the sips, maybe you heard of it. You get, they give you basically about this size of the tank, they give you six hours and build it from scratch, plant it, everything, fill it up, connect filters, filtration, and then the judging is done two days later. Next day you have time maybe to do water change with water's cloudy or fix something, you know, and well, I think they, they, they be judging maybe next day at an afternoon. It's a great experience. You meet a lot of people, you know, that's what the hobby is about. If you get involved in the, even the contest or just events like this, you know, you're meeting people, talk to them about your passion that you share. It's, it's great. I met lots of great people there. I'm, friend, I'm friends with uh, until today. We stayed in the touch and you know, we help each other share the photos before the contest as well, which is fine with friends. We trust. We give you advice. What do you use for your gluing? What uh, connection material? Cotton wool or paper? Cigarettes. Cigarettes. You like that? The smoked ones or <laughs> like the guys in Indonesia? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's good. All right, right. Yeah. No, I, I will use the same technique. I love that. Oh, right, right. Is it not something else that has to cure? The, the, they use the some glue, some kind of glue, yeah. Smoking it, yeah, it is. You can see the smoke coming out, yeah, and the reaction. That's good. Or you can also use the uh, baking soda. If you, let's say, you use the sand or you use the soil for covering, some people use coffee. I used coffee before, it actually makes it smell nice. Instead of smelling these fumes, you know, it's lovely, you know, you put in coffee, you know, the ground coffee, you know, like a powder, put on it and it smells nice, coffee everywhere, yeah, then you do the water change, it might stain the water a little bit, but, you know, you do the water change anyway, first days, it just removes it, so it's good. And then if you mix, mix in the soda, baking soda in the coffee, or in whatever mix you're using to, for covering, it will speed it up and harden quicker. I 
Well, you can see that from the front. If anybody wants to come and look, you know, closer what I'm doing, it's fine. I don't mind. So what? Uh, what got used mostly in the hobby? We use fish keeper. Oh, was fish keeper before I started aquascaping. So it's like thirty percent, and most of you, uh, the rest, we just started straight on aquascaping, and that's. That must be, you know, that's actually, I admire that because if you have no experience with fish keeping and, you know, that nitrogen cycle and all this stuff, you know, like, it's a little bit harder, you know, you need to find out the filtration and everything. But if you have, I think if you go from fish keeping to more aquascaping, it's easier for you. So very good. Um, what way? More water changes, right? Yeah. Would you go back to reef keeping? No. no. You like it? It's more, more, more about the green color now. Yeah. I like the green. The green 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 but some some reef reefs, uh, you know, colors are corals are really nice, and the fish are amazing. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, the fish have such more personality as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I added another small rock at the back there. It's not going to really play any role in aquascape, just to secure it more. So I have the back glue knife to the rock as well. I'm going to put smaller ones in here as well at the back. Yes. 50-50. Mix it with the top, top water. I don't, I don't use minerals. It's not too bad. Uh, TDS around, uh, around 250. It's not too bad, you know. I could go. I could get away with a without arrow, but I have it since I kept the discus in the past. So why not use it? You know. 
That's yeah. Do you don't use that water now? From marine keeping, yeah. yeah Bother. Yeah. If it works, you know why. You, okay, you I have, I have yeah. If the plants are healthy, growing, and they're not growing slow, too slow, then it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And maturity of the tank, you know, if the tank gets over eight months old, you can speak, uh, skip water changes completely, like for a month, and it will be always good. Just clean the glass, maybe, if you have a weed of dust there, and top up. Keep your filtration going, you know. So how much do you do water changes? Uh, once a week, once it's settled, once a week. I'll do maybe 70%, 80%, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll believe you, don't, you don't believe in You do, yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, it's just to leave the space for fish, for some water, you know, yeah, yeah. I do, do that as well, you know. I didn't want to scare you, so I just said 70. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the larger the better. Yeah, do they know they know you, yeah. That's why I'm... <laughs> that's why I'm a little, little bit old school. I I try to... I use still buckets. Yeah. I use buckets because of the shrimp. Keep going, I know how it is. You won't be catching them in the garden, will you? <laughs> so... Yeah. I think... Uh, for, for me also it's like a bit of exercise as well because I don't get much of it these days so <laughs> no all the tanks here are on tap water right all these tanks are on tap water yes yeah, oh, yeah. 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 I think another problem with RO is if you don't have sufficient system and if you have a tank as big as this it's going to throttle your ability to do water changes right so mm -hmm. even if you're using RODI and if you're doing it, like say every once a week or uh, every once in a fortnight, it's better to do it with tap water but more frequently. So yeah, if you yeah, that's nothing. There's nothing wrong with the tap water, you know. It's, I'm thinking actually maybe I'll stop using RO, but at the minute they know it's working for me, why should I change anything? You know, it's I don't have algae problems. The only problem I have with algae is the atoms at the start of. Cycling, you know, after two, three weeks, sometimes after a month, the atom starts a while ago. Oh no, it's out again. It's mo in most of my escapes. Because th that's the thing, our unit doesn't remove silicates. And if you're living in an apartment, you can't generate like, you know, Yeah, storing water is a problem and all that, yeah. So RODI. <laughs> you know, but I don't change cartridges and uh, re resin often as I should. My TDS is probably now, my RO water TDS is probably 20. You know, I don't. Yeah. Yeah, the resin doesn't last very long, does it? Yeah, you should probably change the resin with the cartridges, which is what, every six months? Six months and keep yeah. the membrane for over a year. Yeah. Or if you keep changing cartridges more often, membrane will last more. Actually, yeah. after each RODI session, if you flush your membrane, it makes the life. Yeah, it keeps it keeps the membrane life lifetime longer. Yeah. yeah. It's good to have a flush system on it. And mostly, the most systems do, I think. I think. Yeah. You know, when they come, Roto, help me with the gluing. What do you think? Have you guys met Roto, yeah? Yeah, sure. You can glue the other side. We'll, we'll walk around. Yeah, there's lots of fish, you know, they, some of the fish are well, wild caught, but the most of the fish, you know, it's like bred commercially, you know, in the, in the different nurseries. You know, some fish really come only from the wild. I think they get adapted, you know, better if you, they have our water. But, you know, eventually in a planted tank, you know, soil helps to lower pH and carbon and hardness, you know, CO2 also. 
if you use the bogwood, lots of wood. So, and the ecosystem is very healthy because the plants supply all this oxygen and healthy environment. So, they, they get used to it. Did you, did you have any issues with fish no, in the past? I'm just, well, I'm just interested in what your, what your take on it was. Yeah. The fish we usually keep in aquascaping, you know, it's like, I, I usually go for really like bread and butter. I like the classics, neon tetra, you know, green neon tetra. In my contest like this year I have glow light tetra. I actually never had it before. <laughs> What's the attempt to do like glow tetra? 23. Yeah. Cooler, better. Uh, I can give you, yeah, you can use the glue here. Okay. I will place like a smaller rock here on this side. And let's try to glue it. And then we'll work on the top. Good job I brought the two bottles. <laughs> so that's Aurora, the ambassador for Prodibio and Life Aqua as well. It's not nice to have an assistant, isn't it? He's also very uh, knowledgeable about hobby and products as well. So if you want to ask anything, he'll, he'll tell you. Probably better than me. No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, do it like a put like a rock here just for stability. Yeah, yeah, and glue it with a. You want a cotton wool or you wanna? Yeah, yeah. Take take the wee ball and mix yourself the size you want. Yeah. You can move the box if you know it's in your way. Good. Yeah, so this side here is pretty much solid. I can continue on with the work at upwards. Yeah, but the first this piece here. So how did you get that? I'm just taking this out. Hold on, let's move this. Good job I noticed now. Just move it completely to this side. Gently, yeah. Sorry, what do you ask? So now how did you get into it? taking yourself. Just uh, yeah, for fish keeping. I yeah. I wanted to tanks look nicer. And then I you know searched online and I came across the pictures, videos, and yeah, it was mind blowing. Basically, it's didn't know these things were actually possible. See, all this first time I saw the carpet of Cuba, I was like, wow, you know, it's like yeah, yeah. She she tries to be, but sometimes I think she has these. Like, you know, it's not. It's not easy if you want to go somewhere, you know, and I say, oh, I need to maintain a tank now, I'm on, I'm on a schedule, I need to do this, you know, and it takes three or four hours. In the next workshop, I need to bring us. Yeah. I think they'll be, they'll be probably bored, you know, they, they, they think we are geeks, you know. Sorry? I should never ask you to have a go ourselves, you know, try to scale the tank. Yeah, I don't think she will be interested much. Well, I can maybe try. Get her 60p or something. The harder one. <laughs> no, hold on. I need to look at it. I don't think it fits no, the way I wanted it. No, no, no. I'll just. No, okay. I 
let me just see what way this piece will work first. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. You can you can you can glue this. Yeah. yeah. I could just look at the front there, see them see. I put a little bit of glue. You have the razor blade uh, for cleaning the glass, yeah. but not for now, but for later. Yeah, oh, because. Yeah. Look at the front, you know what it looks like from the front? Good. Higher? Okay. Yeah, I tried to squash it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay, it's on. The point here? <laughs> oh, please say you like it. <laughs> Not finished yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's not good. If you need the tweezers or something, a little bit, let me know. You alright? small stone just to put it under here so yeah. I can glue it. Slightly, so just place it here. No, 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 just yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 
has glue in the hands. <laughs> Yeah, but now we have to pay focus on the the, the shape. <laughs> so we created nice passage here for the fashions, but it'll be interesting. Can you give me the tweezers? Uh, probably month. Three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. But that's after eight months. I mean, it's, you know. I don't know what it is. I, f I find it after eight months is really, really mature, you know, st st stabilized. No issues. So, do you do any specific uh, things to, like, you know, when you go out for a vacation or something, maybe dim a light or something like that? No. Just let it run again. Just let it leave it as it is, and uh, usually just get my neighbor, he's quite handy, comes over just to maybe put some fertilizer in. I don't use uh, dosing pumps. Can you see? <laughs> Can you hold a stone for me like that? Okay, so it's this needs glued here more. Hey, okay, I'll, uh, no, that's fine. So I'm quite happy with the base structure, you know, it's getting pretty solid, can't really. Now I'm going to add more. Let's go. How long let go? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Make it better so it doesn't fit. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. That's it. Pull more over. Yeah, I 
I will call them. Right, is there any other space we can glue it to? Yeah, it needs to be glued more somewhere. Big piece. Another piece. Dave, will it be okay to get the, like a, or just like a very small rock to fit in here, maybe? Small rock, yeah, very small. That will secure it nicely. Yeah, well, I love epi fights. Yeah. Have you noticed that if you close uh, leader, they get affected the first? Yeah, the moss is especially. You need to watch. You need to you need to watch for the moss health. If you start getting bit yellow, you know, you need to have the nitrogen. So you so need to start fi finding balance. Yeah, it's you try to dose at least twice a week, maybe uh, macronutrients. Yeah. Let's see if this one works. Oh, you put dragon stone here, did you? Yeah. Oh, it's too small. Yeah. There wasn't any from the ear, from this type, from an elderly stone. Yeah, you want it? Yeah, the better probably. Oh, hold on. Yeah, give me the bigger, the, the that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Just or the structure, yes, but the cover will be there. I can use the planter. There. Yeah, I just want to secure it here because this is moving slightly. And this, this is lean, lean on it as I can glue it there. Yeah, I will cover it with plants after. So give me the work cotton wool then. No, it's fine. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because it will be visible, you know? That's all right. Coming one piece, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we can put it all here, and that's it. Yeah. Can you get some smaller out of this type? Yeah. What? Just something like these, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice one. All right. So. Now I'm finishing the right side to get closer to the height of this one to balance it, but I want it to be a little bit lower than this one, so it's not looking really symmetrical. People like symmetry, don't we? Do and then yeah. So we can, we can place the rock here. Yeah, so. <laughs> or your rock on the bottom. Even even dragonstone if you want here. Yeah. Something that will fit this gap nicely. Let me check again. No, don't need a rock there. Just I need to glue it to this. I have a rock here. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll hold it like that. Yeah, good. It's not too, it's not too even, so that's good. Yeah. Well, put the hand away. Just stick it uh, here. Okay. Can you hold this wood for me? Yeah. Is there anything that I can put here to hold it? Smaller dragon. Okay. Right. Can you put the glue here? Good. That's the right time. No, let's try and glue it from the back, yeah. Is that rock visible from the front? This one? Yes. Is that visible? Yeah. But does it matter? No? Yeah, okay. yeah I think it's getting good. Okay. Okay. Can you then... Is it visible? Okay. Right. Need to step back a little bit and have a look. <laughs> Balanced. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be obviously in the center there. Yeah. Just I'll try not to be really in the center, a little bit off. Do you ever like, think about golden ratios and stuff like that? No, I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I have it at the back of my mind, but when, when I'm working, I'll see if it fits, you know, if it's not off balance. I don't think I need to glue anything here. Sorry. All right. So, it's all solid. Good. I can keep working. Oh. 
Can you give me small cotton wool, please? So I can glue the front here, and that's it. a good angle there. So now I'm trying to implement smaller pieces towards the back just to enhance the depth a little bit. And then another another layer behind that will be plants. Yeah, it's good. All right, so I'll do that and That's actually good. Uh, this one. Yeah, let's glue this one. Just it was gonna stay there anyway. Smaller up there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, you did? Okay. All right. Okay. It's looking good even in the camera, so I'm happy. Because <laughs> that shows the rea reality in the, in the screen, which is good to compare. <laughs> no, if it's holding, no, no need. I don't need it. Because, huh? Oh, okay, okay. Right. There will be soil behind it anyway, so I'll put it so quite high. <laughs> No. So it's getting there, guys. Uh, a few smaller stones. I'm <laughs> 
All right. No, I'll just uh, trying to <laughs> so just a few smaller stones now for a bit more interest. Okay. Yeah. Be careful. Right. Oh, that's it, that's it. So I'll, fin I'll finish it off now. Sure. Thanks. Thanks very much, mate. Great help. Yeah, I'm gonna finish it now, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Good, 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 good. That's good. Yeah. All right. So, can sit down if you want in the front there.
Oh. Now all the holes at the back are blocked, the cotton wool, so the solution will come forward really. Sorry? Yeah, fall, falling front to front. So what do you think guys, what, do you, what, do you, what would you prefer? Would you prefer the carpet in the front or would you prefer the sand and some details? Yeah, okay, let's go that way. Nice, to, that's nice that they put an input. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You mean in the front? Yeah, so I'm going to use the powder type as well, just because I have it. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have a powder type on top, you know, for planting especially. You know, if you're... It's good for stem plants, for any... It's easier. It won't go anywhere. Oh, sorry. Do we have an aqua shrimp powder from Rodibio as well. That will be one millimeter green size, mostly. Get there, and uh, I will place probably some small rock here, and then I'll cover it with the gravel as well, and the gravel all over the top of the soil that will stop it. And then when I plant it here behind the gravel, you'll see it, the plants will stop the soil as well. This is going to be all planted, and then I'll let uh, Dave worry about the rest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can do it.
I want one. Oh, I think it's yeah, nice. Well balanced. I'm happy. Yeah, well, let's go for the let's go for the foreground. The yeah. No, no, the Prodivio first. Yeah, I'll have some plans to choose from. So we'll see what works. You know. I'll be happy to hear your suggestions as well, you know, we can plan together, it'll be fun. Yeah, most stem plants, carpeting plants in the front here, epiphytes, lots of bucephalandra, uh, small anubias, lots of places to plant, that's why this wood is so good. It provides lots of area for planting without using glue. Yeah. I don't like using glue on the anubias especially because it's, it melts a lot, I noticed. If the glue touches the rhizome, it's, uh, I, I experience lots of melt. So if I can avoid it, I'm not trying to use glue on the Anubias. So this is Prodibios G series gravels. This is a round gray. You see what I'm doing? I'm trying to put it over the soil here. I think it's sometimes better to do this than trying to worry about blocking everything because it will look natural anyway. Well, I also like it by these tubs, you know, if you want to use it, you just put it in a cabinet. It doesn't take much space. It's very handy. I'm going to use also the smaller, the natural mix. What I used to do 
is to do uh, it's not a mistake you know it's personal preference but i think it's foreground looks much better if there is a clear line of sand like you could do place maybe more soil here and the soil rolling towards the front and then you have a soil sand and soil i don't think it looks good you know for the your pleasure at home is yes, fine for the contest photography i think it's better if you have a uniform sand for in the foreground you know and then you let plants grow over the sand to the front and they'll find a way even if you don't have enough thickness of the sand in the front they'll find a way from the back and it'll create natural effect in the front and we have the uh this is kind of new product. I don't even, uh, I never, I never used it. So uh, me and Dave agree that it will be nice to use it, you know, in the sh show tank here. It's called, it's from Louis, or called Saint Cimarron. It's a blend of different grains, you know, like nice beige color, you know, there's grays, there's a bit, bit of black as well. Let's see what it does. It's called Cimarron. Yeah. It's very nice, actually. It creates a really nice transition between these Probibio gravels because there's also a few small pebbles there that will match them perfectly, darker, with, especially the ones with the darker green. And the last, you have a ADA La Plata sand, very popular with hobbies for its natural color. My personal preference is more natural beige, like gray color coloration rather than uh, reddish type or yellow even. Do we have a wee cup? Plastic or something, please. The, the small one, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think that's it. Nice. I'll leave this one for planting now. We'll clean the glass and I think it's ready. I hope you like it. This is good. <laughs> nice one. All right, we'll do. Right, I can take it. Let's, let's hope not, you know, let's hope it's just gonna make it better, better. Um, yeah. It'll be fun to see what we can plant it with. I think anything would look good with it, you know, even, even grassy type plants at the back, you know, a bit more wild or stem plants. No. What would you prefer? Stem plants or wild? Well, I think the stem plants are sort of coming in. Yeah, yeah, nice yeah, so con 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 concave shape, yeah. Uh, it's the idea, yeah. So I wonder what you will you would plant here. What would you like to see here? This is gonna be like focal point. Here or here? Yeah, it would be nice, won't it? Yeah. Or acicularis, standard one. Longer. Yeah. Locaris, yeah. We'll see. I think there's plenty of it. So you wanna take a break? No. Yeah. 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 So uh, thanks everybody for watching for now for the hardscape. I hope I didn't bore you too much. Oh, so it's a lot bit longer process, you know, gluing and preparing. I wanna just make it sure it stays here, it doesn't move. <laughs> yeah. Ooh.
É. Nossa. Hydro. Got nitro. Yeah, but he doesn't have a pot, so I want pot. Only in vitro, yeah? Because I'm gonna use the rest, uh, pot the plants. I don't want to use them in vitro because it will get lost in it. It's too small. But we'll have a different option. It'll just be, we'll use the, the big yummy the super red. Wiggy, I mean, super red. Extra rock. Or, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Still smells the glue in it, you know? Better coffee. <laughs> and coffee will be better, won't it? Yeah. It's sort of similar, but I have a three side bed and not I have a sort of three, four, and eight to one side. So yeah. You do it, how would you stop it going? Oh, if it was a triangle, or let's say. Yeah. yeah you just go gradually, you know, so you, you can use the gravel as well, you know. It depends if you want to leave the side completely with the sand or you want to use a bit of, you know, yeah. soil at the back and going this way up. Yeah. You know, just. I like using this method now because it's easy, yeah. quick. Yeah. And then if you try to block it, you can do, you can place the rock here, that fits, you know? Yeah. And then cotton wool here in that area. That gives you better reflection on the glass. Oh, so it's better yeah. to use something black. Yeah. Black uh, sponge from the after. It's good for that, yeah. for, for the sides here. I wish I knew about that cotton wool trick a year ago. You could have told me that. Uh, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very, very, very <laughs> handy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, enjoy. And you know, we'll see if you can. You like? Do you like it? Yeah, you like it. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that I this wood didn't didn't fit as I planned in the dojo. I I want it to be turned this way. And this area was matching the wood here. That the flow. But then at the end it fitted somehow, so I, I'm happy. You know? yeah, I, 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 I didn't have this plant, you know, but it can actually just drop the rocks there, stop the soil coming forward. This is going to be old and will be a small epiphyte, you know. Yeah, it'll, it'll be here. One, one layer, second layer, third layer, fourth layer if we want to, and then we can create the fifth here with the focal point with small plants. It's amazing how therapeutic it was someone else do it, rather. You'd enjoy it, yeah. I'm quite new to it, so when I do it, I'm always, I, I, you know, stressing about. I, I, was, I was stressing yeah. as well. Look. Yeah, I know, that's, that's the thing. Yeah, because <laughs> because you, need, you, need to, you need to work fast and, you yeah, know, because... Yeah, you're obviously under the pressure of people watching you. Yeah, it's, uh, but it's mostly because you don't have that much time. And yeah. if you're watching somebody doing it, it's, I'm, I'm glad you said that you didn't mind. Because... It's, well, it's the glue, you know. Yeah. Really it's a gluing it's a slow process, yes. And a couple of guys suggested that they wanted to see Diorama because this wood is perfect for Diorama. I've seen amazing forest in the Poland they did. If you place it vertical vertically and then you can create layers. Yeah, yeah, very nice. And easy to work with. And it works. It's like a Lego, like a like dragon stone. My first step made the mistake of not securing everything. Yeah. Uh, Mine looked good. In my opinion, it was it was it was a nice escape. But yeah, every time I clean, everything. Yeah. This, this is gonna be good. The only problem might be this wood because it's only glued here here. So if he knocks it stronger, it might break off. But I it's gonna be fine. With this kind of aquascape, you know, you need to sort of pay attention to maintenance as well. You can't make quick movements. Yeah, but it's fine. It's just solid. Yeah. And there's plenty of space for maintenance as well. Yeah, I've tried, you know, yeah. So you can put a little pipe here. Skimmer flow here. Yeah. But there's not much space now. I realize there's not much option for carpeting plants. But I can use Ricardia, you know, just shove it in, it will just start spreading. No, Ricardia, uh, Cuba. Also, mini hair grass, a little bit here. Small creeps. Shove it in there, they'll start growing, you know. I mean, Elocardisk, if you start spreading forward in Cuba, it'll be fine. Thursday, I'm gonna smoke as well. Did the live stream stop now, did it? I don't even know, because I still have a mic. I wonder if I can go smoke with the mic, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna ask. Yeah, I'm gonna 
Yeah, fresh air, man. <laughs> Round one done. Round one done. Yeah, on the floor. Yeah. I think it's on the floor. No, it's okay. Yeah, I think it's, um, we were just saying we didn't know kind of what to expect because this is before our first show. It's been really interesting today, actually. One of the things seems to be it's simple as it is, it's putting sand on top of the detail stones. Yeah. It's like, oh, we can put detail stones on top of sand, but I've never yeah. seen it. Yeah, I think and then more on top. Then more more on top. Yeah, yeah. More I, tr I tried this on the higher, the, the bigger gravel, so the solar system. Yeah. 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 something different, you know, like, build a wall and it's a That's a long story. Not fit perfect. Yeah. I use the sponge black on this side because if you use black, white, cotton, yeah, it's it the reflex on the glass. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, I'll face me. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, so before we start planting, maybe I can just uh, explain this or mention the bacteria again. We're going to see the soil with the live bacteria that comes with each bag of soil from Prodibio. Uh, oh, as I mentioned before, we'll have bacter soil, which is basically bacteria, and then we have nutri soil, which is nutrients for the bacteria to get active and start working for us. So I'm going to empty these vials in the bottle. The packaging is, packaging is fully recyclable, so you can just place it back when you finish with it. Break one top off, another one top off, and then it pours down. Quite a time consuming process. Rodo, is Rodo here? Okay, is, is Rodo preparing plants or is he. Yeah, I'll just want to uh, empty these bacteria in the bottle first. Oh, very good. So just another four and that's it. So with bacteria you get from Prodibio is uh, it's very economical that you have all these single doses. Even later on you can use bacteria to seed your filtration and everything. And the good thing about it is that it's in a dormant state. Once you open the vial and it gets into contact with air and water, it comes alive. So it, there's no shell life. You can have it on the shelf in the shop or anywhere at home for a long, long time. Set. Oh. Oh. Getting clumsy already. Basically, what I usually do just sp spray it first, get the soil moist evenly. The water goes into the soil and seeds it, seeds it basically evenly. And then at the end, when I get bored of it, I'll just pour it. <laughs> I'm actually very 
curious to see when it's wet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I already put it in the bottle. Yeah, no, but it's the bacteria, is it? Sometimes I can't tell if it's actual bacteria. I like to work with just stuff that makes bacteria grow. It's, yeah, but it's bacteria, the strains of bacteria, yeah. In, let's say, in biodigest, there's 13 strains. With nitrifying bacteria. So now I'm just going to pour the rest. That's it, I think we can start planting. So before we start planting, you should uh, think about what do you want to use, what plants. Uh, always go by the size of your aquarium. You don't want anything too big to empower the hardscape, look at unbalanced, something that will fit. You know, I like to use small, smaller plants, smaller textures, but in the foreground or in the front parts of the tank, you can use some like a highlight plants with the larger leaves. It will, it will create nice effect and it will create depth and perspective towards the back if you use all smaller textures at the back. Not too many, a couple. So I think before I ask Dave, I think they're preparing it. Uh, I would like to use Anubias uh, coin leaf. So those nice round shape, only maybe two or three. Maybe one here, one there somewhere, you know, and one in the middle here. I, I love the plant, and then everything else will be smaller Anubias carpeting plants around this area here. And later on, we'll use Anubias uh, Monte Carlo here on this part. It will have a nice draping down effect. Then Monte Carlo on this part. I'll try to create a one size, one size clump of Monte Carlo a little bit bigger than the other. And try when you, when you use the plants to achieve the balance of planting. If you use something on one side, try to use it on the other side as well, especially in this concave layout. That will make it balanced. And try to use more of it on one side, less of it on the other side. So it's not too symmetrical. Or, or just trying to find a different place, different position. Uh, I'll use lots of, of small Bucephalandras here, small Anubias, that will contrast nicely with the bigger Anubias here. And it creates more effect and its perspective towards the depth, towards the back. And then at the back will be stem plants, different. We'll talk about them when we plant them, but this is the idea for the start. I would like to plant Elocaris acicularis mini grass, uh, then small types of uh, cryptocorins, parva, cryptocorin parva, cryptocorin uh, pygmea lutea, and uh, also Lilopsis brasiliensis, because it grows nice and slow, it's not demanding. Also, the hair grass will grow not really fast, you know, it's, it just grows in a nice space. Just to balance it for maintenance wise, so because you will have lots of fast growing stem plants at the back, you don't want to keep trimming in the foreground as well all the time. Yeah, you should just leave it nice and tidy for a longer time. You don't have to touch it. Um, and that's it. Dave, are you ready with the carpeting plants? Yeah, we've got that. Yeah, the fr front, the Alocaris, Lilopsis, uh, small cryptocorins, and if you have it on one tray, even small anubias and other, other types. Anybody wants to help and try the plant? Yeah, happy days. I'll just sit. <laughs> I'm getting tired. <laughs> no, I'm fine. But we'll, uh, yeah, I'll be happy to, for you to, you know, get everybody involved. Wow, that's big.
That is big. I didn't expect that. <laughs> is there a smaller one? Oh, let me see if it looks. Let's see. No, it is quite big. Wow. Hmm. Let me see. I think it's going to be fine. I think it's going to be fine here. Wedge it in. That's it. If you can avoid super glue, right, just wedge it in. And this, this is hardscape, and the, that wood is perfect for planting without glue. So, yeah, happy with that. Do we have a maybe sm smaller one for the other side? Like, no, the same, the same uh, species, but smaller size. Perfect. Yeah. That will keep it balanced. Me too. <laughs> oh, right, right. So, who wants, who wants to help? Yeah, come on, who wants to help on the... We get on. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So... Right, guys, thanks for having me. Thank you. So, my assistant here, yeah. uh, he's going to help me plan. <laughs> Very good. All right, so we'll start with these two. The Parva, Lutea Pygmea, Mini Hergrass, Eric Kowlon. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Eric Kowlon, Vietnam. That will go to the side there, right. or the, gra the Gravelis. Yeah. And the uh, Liopsis Brasiliensis in this area here. Right there, yeah. If you want to make like the yeah. portion smaller for yourself, that's fine. You know. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, that's what I'll, I'll keep him right. <laughs> Uh, do you want fancy stuff from Dave here? The, the ADA? The ADA? Yeah. Yeah. First one helps I'll 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 give you I'll, I'll give you the privilege of using it. Oh, perfect. So let me place this side here. So you want on the tray? Okay. Oh, there's actually two. Perfect. Oh, sorry, mate. All right. All right. Out a little bit. <laughs> So that's the Eric Cowan, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Shove it in there. <laughs> Good one. She's gonna fly. No. If you if you can, then just yeah. a little bit of gravel. Perfect. Oh, no worries. My good. Is the signal equivalent to Monte Carlo what you can use the very easy very easy plant is hydrocotyl tripartita. Yeah, and there is also mini version. This is the plant behind you. See that bright green, like a clover leaf plant, grape dripping down. You can use that. Very easy. You can actually, you can actually get annoyed by removing it all the time after a while. So. How far do you want me to go up on this side with that? So like yeah, plant the whole yeah. width. Yeah, and then we'll use some. Is that the, we'll use some for the other side as well. Let me see if I can place this one over just to get it out of the road. So you, you go as far as the sand. Hold on a Yeah, you can uh, go over here. Yeah. You know. Okay. Then, then in front of that, if you can, you can plant the Liliopsis. Yeah, or even there, where, 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 it, where it suits you. Yeah, yeah. Eric Alon, Vietnam is quite new plant. It's a nice dark, it looks like blix a little bit, nice rosette plant, dark leaves. It doesn't need much light, so you 
it's safe enough to plant it in a bit of a semi-shaded area, it will do well. And it's, it's create a nice effect if you mix it with other rosette plants like a uh, cryptocorium. So um, or even Blixa, it will be perfect because Blixa will be brighter green. And this is the, create the darker green shade. And if you mix them together, they so grow the same way. Be where do you want nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can even plant yeah. here, here. Well, well, let's mix. Mix it, yeah. Mix it up. Mix it up. Yeah, if you mix it up, guys, it gives it more of a natural look. <laughs> Very good. That's it. There's no symmetric in nature. <laughs> so if you, you know, you blend plants, it gives it a more natural <laughs> Perfect. The door is in his own. What a treat, though, eh? Get into a plumbing email. Happy days. Yeah. Do you want my seat? Um, I'm thinking we'll get that in there. Yeah. Yeah, it will be. Nice. I'll escape this tank. <laughs> is, is the. Is that the rest of it? What's the question there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, hold it and then put it up. Do we need to come to around the around the competition place for you at the weekend? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Any questions, guys? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's quite hard to pull off the back. Does anybody else want to plant? I can sit down. What, what about you, sit? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'll sit down. Oh, there you go. Oh, you. Oh, that's quality, yeah, mate. Does it feel amazing, the ADA yeah, season? Good, yeah. it? Um, so, I I'm jealous now. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Oh, fine. Oh, that's my master line. What, what, are, what do you have there? Yeah, yeah. What do you come? Even there? Anywhere. The Willopsis brasiliensis can quite tolerate the shaded area as well. Which is good. Slow, slower growing foreground for ground plant, and it works really well with the Alocaris mini because it's the same like a grassy type, but uh, Lilopsis has more like a wider leaves. If it doesn't work for you, if it doesn't want to stay, pull a little bit of a uh, gravel over. Okay. Well, that's it. No, no, no. We have to we have too much air grass, I think. So only we need some of that. Maybe I should put more gravel over. No, it's fine. We don't have to plant all of it, so sure. Yeah, I put maybe a couple things over.
you can use that all corner. Yeah. Yeah, that part. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Use the other hand to hold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you have access, yes, you can. Yes. Um, Epiphytes. Yeah, yeah, and the petite as well. Petite and bonsai and these wavy green, yeah. yeah. Not. We can even we we got rid of the gravels that are gone now. Yeah, if I just need to maybe later just sprinkle yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, yeah, we'll get the. Uh, On the other side, we need to paint it. Yeah. 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 Oh, more here. And also, if you need that, you can put more. Uh -huh. What is left here? So we can, we can switch maybe. <laughs> yeah. See if you have space there. Not much really. Yeah. No, no, this cool there. So I'll just leave the crepes here so for different texture. Oh. What happened? You slid there. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. I can't get over how fast the lead plant is plant. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Years of experience. Yes. Yeah, I think just we're going to leave it for now. That's it. Let's do the or put other size somewhere. I don't think it's too many. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying not to glue. <laughs> oh yeah, we have Cuba. Okay. <laughs> so now we're planting a nubius petit, Bartera petit. Just find the space where you can fit it and it will fit there nicely. This is Bustafalandra SP Red. It will create nice contrast to the green. At the moment, it doesn't look very red, but eventually, it will grow nice reddish leaves. <laughs> yeah, especially epiphytes, because they're grow, you know, they're slow growers. They can be more expensive than, let's say, st stem plants around other stuff. Yeah, so if you. I have two tanks, so I try to always combine. I escape one, I move the fish there, and then I work on the other one, I remove the fish there. Or if I don't want to keep the fish anymore, I want to try some different fish for different scape, I'll rehome them, give them to friends or somebody. Yeah. <laughs> oh. No, we don't do that. That's bad. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, if, if you're attached to your fish, you don't want to keep them, just. It, you, you could maybe, you know, you, you have your mature filtration, you could possibly do, you don't even have to buy a tank, you can go to like some hardware store and buy a big tub, plastic tub, hook up the filter to it, you know, you have it mature, put the filter, it will be fine for a few days. And then you move the filter again to your main tank, still cycling, it's fine. <laughs>
Wow. <laughs> so I know this will do perfectly fine here. Sh shadow, this is what you want. If you have the shadows and you want to plant there, Anubias is always a perfect choice. You don't want to have, let's say, bright green planted there. You know, it will be too much highlight or contrast to your shadow. And if you ask me what my favorite plant is, I'll tell you that it is Anubias. <laughs> it is. I just, I just love it. I love that to work with it. It's easy. It's nice dark green. I like the dark green colors. You know, it's a beautiful plant. Simple. You will probably expect something more, you know, like advanced, like you know, Palustris cuba or something. You know, some stem plant. Nice color for stem plant. I know. I love the I get no value of my Anubias yeah. Uh, if they've got any, I can grow it, but I have to grow it in the dark. Basically. Yeah, it's the best way. Yeah, the best way. Yeah. I think this, this is going to be an issue here, yeah. but I hope, I'm hope i hoping that with the st growing stem plants, yeah. growing fast, yeah. you will battle the algae issues. But yeah. if, if the day thinks that you can move it, the cephalandra can handle algae quite a lot. Yeah. So maybe you can replace it then. Yeah. yeah. If we have, maybe maybe we can put here, let's say you will, you will place here trident fern. That will grow and actually it will overshadow it, you'll be fine. Which I actually might do. So this is a Bucephalantra, Bucephalantra pygmea wavy green. I'm going to use it here. I also love using these epiphyte plants because they uh, disguise any imperfections on your scape. You know, like you have connections between the rocks and wood, you can disguise it and then it looks like a one natural piece. So I'll also use plants here in these cracks. contrast with the red because this is all green this will be red the same as this yeah I'm think I think so I'll I think to put one um, yeah here one and two just two pots Perfect. Oh, they're splitting them. Oh, very good. Yes, yes. We'll try to yeah, yeah, it's just very good. Hold on, I'll grab this. That's oh, right. Yeah. It's so easy when you have plants brought to you. Oh, nice. I love it.
the way I was would you put that would be a, the last one. See where you've got the um, stone with the soil? There? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to put fern there, the, the CDs. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm... I'm but yeah, you did, that's where you will fit, perfect. What do you mean? Maybe they may be here. That's what I said. Is that So this is the Microsorum Trident Fern. It, uh, it creates nice, I think it's my favorite fern out of the ferns. It creates a nice spiky you know, effect. Very natural looking when it grows. I don't want to use too much of it because it can grow quite big, but then with the maintenance, you will be taking off larger leaves regularly. It will stay small. And the similar with the uh, bul bul uh, Bulbitis heldoloti, if you let it grow too big, even if you trim it after, it will still grow big leaves. So you need to start from the start. When you, when you see the big leaves, take it off instantly. When you keep doing that, it will still keep growing small leaves. It will stay compact. I think I should spray a little. Why do I stop it now? <laughs> oh, that's it. Good job. It's quite squeaky this one. I'm not going to put any more fern there. Uh, I think that's it. Let's go with the uh, Monte Carlo and Cuba. Thank you. 
Apple, do you have any tips on growing Monte Carlo as an FBA product? Good CO2 circulation and fertilizers. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Once, once it starts, it grows. You know, it might have a problem to adapt at the start, but if you are trying to attach it to the uh, the hardscape, it's better to go with the pot, I think, because you know the in vitro plants are more fragile. If you want to prefer that, put the in vitro plant in the soil rather rather than hardscape. I, uh, that's what I would suggest. It's a better chance. What does it look like from the front? <laughs> I love you, man. You're funny. Uh, then, well, we'll do the other side. I'll uh, place it here. I can't. Folder. So now let's go with the smaller Hemianthus cavitricoides cuba. It's more demanding than Monte Carlo. Definitely needs more light CO2 and nutrition, I'd say. The, but the same principle, you know, you go with the potted plant if you can. And I deliberately planted Monte Carlo in the front, Cuba more at the back. So this will drape down with this larger leaves and this will create smaller leaves so it will enhance the depth a little bit what i find with Mont what uh, hemianthus cuba is far easier to control it's just you know it's because especially on the hardscape if you're growing like that it will not grow as fast you know it's with, with, with a monte carlo micronotimoris when it gets going it might get a little bit invasive, you know, it will create these big balls and doesn't look natural then. So you can trim it, it will start growing again, smaller leaves. And then if you trim it a few times and it creates bigger and bigger, it makes, you know, it doesn't look that natural and might throw it, might throw it a little bit off the balance. You just pull it out, spread, split it, put it back in and give the rest somebody or do whatever you want with it. Plant it somewhere else in a different tank. Anybody with a multiple tank syndrome? <laughs> All of us? Oh, I'm not too bad, I think. Two is enough for me. How many do you have at home? Three? The big, big, the how many? Bigger size or smaller? That's a length. Yeah, centimeter. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So I, I suppose you spend the most time with your 120, yeah. maintenance-wise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm actually sorry sometimes I have my contest tank 120 in the dining area in the kitchen, and I don't really spend much time there. <laughs> but in the living room I have 90, and uh, yeah, it's, it's the one I would be looking at more, just because what it is. So. I don't really want to have. I don't have space for 120 to put it there. I would like to. Is that your biotope? That's nice. The biotope. Yeah, I'm trying. You know, uh, I was doing both tanks, you know, like for the contest, and I dis dis realized that I'm missing out on some things, like you know, trying different plants. You can do that if you try different plants and for fun, you know, even. But even I think the judges and are getting bored of the trend in the contest that was keeping they want to see going they want to see us going back to 
the basics back to the nature style and doing the old school plants like Echinodorus and Nymaphaea lotus and all these plants, you know, like classics. People are afraid to use them a lot because they're they're bulky and big. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's gonna go this way, yeah. I and mean, we will, we will see more classics, yeah. even yeah, because uh, after talking to a few people and they say you know if you're judging the contest with uh, lots of stem plants all the time and this, this, the same shape, same shape, yeah. same shape, same shape, and then one one photo pops up with uh, different plants, and you're like yeah. wow, yeah. you know it stands out. And we see that some people start using that them plants more often. It depends what you like, you know. It's so yeah, I decided that I will try different things in the living room tank. I will keep the 120 for the contest, you know, maybe once a year I won't do participating in so many. Yeah. And just whatever is allowed by ADA, you know, so I will enter the, those. And yeah, keep it and keep the one in the living room for trying new things. And you never know after Bato I might do some nature style aquascape and different plants, you know, and if it looks good, I'll enter it. Why not? Just for fun. Yeah. Oh the mirrors, the mirror effect, yeah, yeah. It was the Stephen Chong did it a couple of years ago. It was, uh, yeah, it was very effective. And Juan Puchades used it as well in his uh, Diorama scape with the Dragonstone. I never tried, I don't know. It's, I'm not in that level yet. <laughs> you know, it's, you, that's what I like about contests because you're trying something new every year. You're trying to, you know, aim higher, get better. You know, it, 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 it pushes you. And science cliche, but from nature, yeah. And even some other guys work, you know, you, you, you noticed, you, you see these results every year, which I like, everybody celebrates, you know, sharing their works after the contest, and then you see the photos, and you're like, wow, wow, you know, it's because they everybody try to keep it secret, you know, you're not supposed to share. Some people share, which is fine. I used to share as well, you know. But, you know, if you don't share, there's more surprise, you know, for for other contestants, for other people to follow contests just for inspiration, you know, you know for, for judges as well, just fair. They don't see tank online all the time and then they have to judge it, you know, it doesn't matter. Where would I put it? What do you think? Here? Yeah. So I would like to see uh, some people, just, there's like a misconception. What is the contest style aquascape? It could be anything. It's what you like. Yeah. It could be simple nature style aquascape. You, you are happy with it. You like it. You send just, uh, I would say, I, what I would suggest is uh, respect the contest, right? So try and take the right equipment, clean your tank, make it presentable, make it nice. When you see this is the best shape it has, it doesn't have to be a crazy diorama, you know? And, Take a nice photo of it. If you can't take it yourself, get the help. You know, that's, you're showing that you care. You know, to the contest, you're trying your best to present your aquarium and send it. Sometimes you might be pleasantly surprised what you get. My first entry to IPLC was 81. <laughs> and I was like, wow, and that really boosted my motivation. And the next year I was 141. The year after I was 397 or something. So it happens. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna work harder. And then there was this Josh Sims super seminar talking about contest aquascaping. And I said, okay, I'll do something like this. You know, I'll try focus more on work, work harder. Step out of comfort zone. The maintenance wasn't easy, but it worked out. It was 42. And I was like, wow, okay. And then I was glad to see my friend, you know, who lives in England, Thomas. Yeah, he was just beside me as well. He was 41. I was like, yeah, good. And I think even uh, in the UK, the aquascaping, the contest aquascaping, there's lots of entries, you know, with, I think it used to be smaller, and now it's what, 20, 20 something? It used to be what, five, six? So, it's, yeah, I think it's growing. But it's not about the contest, you know, it's all about fun and pleasure. So, whatever you like, guys, you know. 
we can just you know ha we can just help you know to show you a few tricks or you know so that's what i want to come uh, put across that what is the contest aquascape style it's not there is no you know you, you create what you like what you what, it's all it's all about that sharing your passion with the world Yeah, yeah, this was something. The Juan Puchades, you mean, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it was something like that. Why is it not stopping? What did I do wrong? Yeah? What is this? I'm like a, like a, like a greenhorn. Yeah, okay. You see? Thank you, Roland. That's what I have. Yay! I need to learn a lot. I, I don't have this bottle at home. I use the like hand one. <laughs> I think we should get somebody else involved for the background plants because we are getting there slowly. The stem plants. It's gonna be. Shh. Anybody fancies it? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, we can try from the back. One, you, you one side, I'm, I'm doing the other side. Right. That'll be good. Last one. Will I force it somewhere? <laughs> Here? Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to be much lighter, I think, for it to, to grow. Um, here somewhere. I mean, here somewhere? Good. We'll try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good one. I will creep down nicely. Yeah. It will cover some nice details, but it's fine. Yeah. So we can go for stem plants. You have them already, yeah? Yeah. Oh, legends. Yeah. The perfect. We're gonna use Otonia palustris, it's a nice feathery plant, fresh green color here. Then behind it, I would like to use uh, Rotala rotundifolia, it's a classic. And then uh, Rotala orange juice. And the same way going, Rotala orange juice, Rotala rotundifolia, Otonia palustris, yeah, that way. What is this? This is the orange juice? No, this is uh, Ludwigia. Oh, Ludwigia, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. So, we, and also Ludwigia mini super red, the striking red plant over there for the focal point. We're gonna place it here in the golden ratio. In the rule of thirds, it's like one third and then two thirds. It's a perfect spot for it and it's open, so you will see it straight away. Anybody wants to come and plant? Yeah. It's fine, I don't mind. Make it fun and faster. 
the IG right there, sorry, mate. Raven, big boy. Yeah, you can go on that side. Yeah, that's it. So, you want to start with the... One down? Yeah. Where are you going? Where are you going with this? Hotonia Palustris. Here. Here yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think they're not being at all. <laughs> yeah. I'll this, I'll just try plant full portion. With the Hotonia Palustris, you can do like uh, three stamps together, four, whatever there is. That, that's, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. So, do we have any more Ludwigia Palustris? Uh, coming. Oh, is there? He's not cooking. That's fine, that's fine. I'll start working on those. Yeah, good, good. So, this focal point with the Ludwigia Palustris will be a little bit bigger. And then I'll plant some on the other side, but only like one highlight. That's it. It will be like two portions, maybe. Sorry? Yeah, you can as dense as you want, yeah. And, and plant it deep. Yeah, yeah. See the stem plants that come from the MR spots, plant them deep. Yeah? Because they will start transforming straight away when they start growing. And then you need to trim it. So if you plant deep, you'll have the new submerged growth from the bottom, from the from the soil. Yeah, if you leave it tall, then it will start growing. Uh, submerged very high. Yeah, it's just deep, you know. Just let them, let them, let them stick out. Maybe that that way. That, that's, yeah. If you can, and if you don't, if you can't, that's fine. Dave will worry about it when it trims first time. <laughs> Dave's probably done, so the red it's time plant will be the Rotala orange juice. It will develop nice. Nice is only red stem, and then leaves are mostly green, but eventually it will grow orange and very nice spiky leaves. Oh, you just look at you. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super. Super duper. Mm, I don't need that much. No, oh, but sure, I'll, if you have it here, I'll put it in. This way, and then go with like tri triangle like that, and then I'll put something else behind it. Do you have any more that I can use? Yeah, perfect. What is your preference if you are planting your skips? What plants do you like? Do you like stem plants, he heavy stem plant tanks, or do you prefer more traditional style, wild grasses, stuff like that? I think they both have their charm, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, see with the, like large bushes of rotala. When I trim that, it's just very therapeutic. I love it. Yeah. It's the that's why I love the Marutala so much because when you trim these bushes and you're going and you're shaping that it creates that nice shape. I love it. I don't replant because I'm lazy. I just want to trim it, and that really relaxes me. I, I don't like removing them from the water surface, but yeah, <laughs> so, yeah trimming is class. Yeah. 
I don't I don't replant tips at home because I don't need to, you know, different here for the shop, you know, like they want to present the tanks always in the best shape, so they replant all the time. It's a lot of hard work. I'm sure Dave has now practice over the years. <laughs> Do other staff maintain tanks and trim as well? Yeah. Do other guys maintain the tank as well? Yeah. Uh, John yeah. Has built a store here and the Pyrex has all the other tanks up. Uh, Steve used to maintain the tanks for me. Um, but I do a lot of that now. Yeah, you like it? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> <laughs> no, the tanks look great. Like. Give me some of that. You can maybe yeah, I'll use the rest. You want the rest? There's a, thing, yeah. there's a few gaps here. But yeah, you can uh, because see, I wanted to put it in the folia yeah, behind it. Yeah, you can start, okay, okay. so you can move this. Move that one towards the uh, just somewhere in between. Yeah. Get it down in that. It's your struggle as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And use the orange juice. Is that uh, orange juice? Yeah, use orange see juice. The behind it in that corner. Use the autumn de folia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh that's what I was looking for. <laughs> Find the boy off. Dave, do we have any more Hotonia palustris? Uh, yeah. uh, I'd say maybe three pots. Three? Yeah. It's not too greedy. No, it's fine. Well, it's okay. Because uh, <laughs> no, you want to have the soil covered completely. So. Dave, quite more pots. Mm-hmm, yeah. So if you have the stem plants that are very tall or long, you separate them half. You just plant the bottom, they will start releasing new shoots already. And then these will root and grow up. Always do it on node. If you want to even save money and use less pots. Good practice. And, and even if you make them the same length, it will grow more even from the start. But yeah, I usually not really fussed about that because first you let them grow tall, yeah, and then you tr the first trim you trim as low as you can, that much from the soil, and you can replant the cuttings in between, and after that, the, with the second cut, you trim again a little bit higher, and after that it should grow ni nice and even everything, and more dams as well. Sorry? Do you want to cross it back here? Just up to the top of there. Yeah, just plant more dams. Yeah. If you can. Yeah, no worries. The. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah, split them, yeah, half and
find the blondes are very few, therapeutic. You like it, yeah? Yeah, I like to find some nice music. <laughs> Be my element, me and my plants. Sing us a song. Sing you a song. What do I want? Like a rap. Can you? Yeah. Uh, a bit that's good. Stop, like right now, listen. I just met my friend who was <laughs> something. Got hold of me tightly for a couple of daily and night me. We have to stop yo. I don't know. Perfect. Like, All right. Yeah. That's my karaoke song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just avoid that. You know, don't find them. That's it. Probably okay. That's it. This one's done. So you still have a little on the folia, yeah? yeah. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll just plant these oranges. Yeah, the stems here are quite long. So, right there. Somebody wants to come and spray the plants? No? Yeah, you can come and spray the plants. You got mic? There you go. <laughs> Perfect. I'm not good at it, so I'll, I'll leave it to you. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I asked. <laughs> Close to the finish, yeah. You have, uh, yeah. I'm just planting these oranges here. I'm gonna plant oranges on this side as well, and then we'll use something for the center. I don't know what. Blexa. Blexa. Do you think? So? Do you think so? Just sort of growing just above it. Yeah, yeah. And give that nice, like when it goes like a little bit of red this way, give it a nice blend with the orange juice. Good. That's that's fine. Yeah. Can we? Dave, can we have Blixa? Yeah. No. You, you have invi you have tissue culture or yeah. I think let's start with two pots to see, you know, and then I don't know. What. Yeah. Yes, please, mate. <laughs> <laughs>
right so to the Do you prefer planting in the wet soil or dry soil yourself? I prefer dry. You prefer it dry? Yeah. I actually never tried. I like having dry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's dead> <laughs> Bad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I made a mistake calling you up, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, you you're, my show. You're, you're ruining my show, mate. Sorry, mate. <laughs> All right, let's do the blixa uh, and do, do we have Alocaris acicularis, the potted version, immersed? Yeah. It's in the battery pay for the second to the right. <laughs> I think I'll fly more than you. Sorry? I think I'll fly more than you. Did you? <laughs> um, one, two, three, four maybe. Four, four, yeah, four. So I'm planting your Blixa japonica, which will create nice orangey green brushes. And this light will be definitely going orange. And behind that, I want to plant a local articulatus, which will create nice, a little bit taller curtain. With a nice fine, finer grassy texture. And that will be it. I think that's our finish. Oh. You notice I haven't used any moss, because we don't really need to, but we can maybe put some Ricardia here. If, if we can steal some from your tank, what do you think? Like one, if you want to clamp, yeah, and we all just split it anywhere. That's it. Wow, Perf perfect. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's all right. It's fine. Oh, that's going to be nicely planted, eh? What do you think? It's brilliant, mate. Top notch. Wow, perfect. Wonderful. Sorry, last little bit there, mate. It's medium red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a beautiful moss of Ricardia uh, Hamedrifolia, or Mini Pelia. I think it's the most beautiful moss. And it's low demand, you know, uh, low maintenance. So it's perfect. Who likes trimming moss? Huh? What, do you have any special techniques that you use, guys, for trimming the moss? Uh, they do you have a gel type super glue. Gel, can I have a gel type super glue?
Oh wow, you can stick it somewhere if you find it. It's flying. <laughs> Where is it? Oh yeah, perfect. Super. <laughs> is that need to be pierced? Is it? Yeah. Oh, I need to remove this ring, I think. Oh. Yeah. Can we just veg it in the nice gaps and tracks? Wherever we can, we can glue it. And this will cover the soil. I'm actually, gonna look for the from the front. Ah, yeah, quick. <laughs> I think it's best after you just use the razor. Yeah. If you ever, if you ever get uh, super glue on the glass, don't worry. You know, with, with the dries, you can. The, Razor scraper, you can just take it off. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you like to see, guys? The Would you? No. You like them? Oh, it depends if you want to keep shrimp here or not. I will not keep shrimp with the tiger above the, But yeah, what, what do you reckon? Asian mummy nose. That's nice, yeah. Sababwa splendence, or what do you call it? Yeah. Well, um, I'm a bread and butter, I told you. I would like you know, like green neons or something. Green or, or black neons. Yeah. Green rasboras. Yeah. The cubotai. Uh, maybe, maybe a bit small. Yeah. yeah <laughs> to destroy it all. <laughs> I would like maybe not the what do you call them? The Danio Chopra. Danio Chopra. The glow like Danio. Common name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The school nice as well.
But that's it guys, I think I'm finished. The last couple pieces of Ricardia and then or no oh, the here. I would cover that. Dave, sorry. Where is Dave? He's, he's hiding, he doesn't want to give me any more Ricardia. <laughs> Yeah, can I one, one, one more piece like this and the uh, razor blade? Razor blade and one piece small, yeah, of Ricardia. Oh, it's been quite, quite a lot. So the uh, you can place it here on the soil. This will cover it. I'll finish it off like that. Yeah, cover the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I just want to remove the super glue I got on the glass here. That's nice. That idea. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, he's been very generous with the Ricardia. That's nice. That's covered. We, yeah, pl place it here on the stone. Yeah. Or even here, if you want. Oh, yeah, I got the glue, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put it, put, cover this area here, just. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full dress. Perfect. Thank you very much. Like this. <laughs> I hope nothing will float. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Oh, the glue. More. Hey guys, so thanks for watching, for your attention. You've been a, you've been a great audience, and I really was felt comfortable. Doing, you know, like full, full on workshop. I really enjoyed myself. Thank you. And I hope I hope you like it. First three weeks? Yes. Dave will we will probably do daily water changes. Is Dave here? No. I, I, I reckon, yeah, I think it's their practice to do daily water changes. I think every other day is fine. Great. And what about the fertilizers? Fertilizers, I will start with the Prodibio BioVert Plus, right. the micronutrients, magnesium, potassium, only one. Okay. I will do that for the first week. Maybe next week I will add one, once a week I will add BioVert Ultimate, which is macronutrients as well, and do micronutrients uh, BioVert Plus daily. For, uh, Two and a half to five mil day, a daily. It's quite concentrated, so it's enough. And other than fertilizers, do you add any other things like you know plant enzymes, plant plant hormones, like thecum advance, something like that? No, the BioVert Plus actually have photos, uh, photo, phyto hormones. Yeah, the, the the one with the micronutrients, which is good. It's all in one, perfect. I don't have it here because I only have BioVert Ultimate. We missed it some somewhere. We didn't bring it by mistake. But yeah, 
not sure, but, but it depends on Dave, whatever he fancies. I would like him to try ProDBO, you know. I had a good success with it. It's wrong, working well. Oh, yeah. Huge thanks, mate, for this. This is oh, wow. absolutely fantastic. And say thank you. Wow. This is Captain Mike. Oh, I love that, yes. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Yay! I only have the Nature, Nature Aquarium book free, I think. So this is perfect. I can remember. I need to start collecting. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you like it, you know. Yeah. Wow. Let's see how it evolves, you know. I hope, yeah. I think, you know, with your, with your maintenance practice and Skills, it, it will do fine. <laughs> because there is lots of stem plants to keep it balanced, you know, from the start, it will grow fast, especially Hotonia and uh, all of them, basically. Would you recommend fertilizing in terms of like, I, I, I would recommend, I usually like 50% on this light, especially, you know, or any, like a very high powered light, I would try. Like the, the, the height is perfect. I think. That's how you yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, if you want, maybe slightly lower, but I think it's twenty-five percent, twenty-five to centimeters to thirty is perfect for this light. Okay. You'll have, you have better spread as well, and it has enough power to penetrate. So, the intensity, yeah. yeah. So this is safe now. I think I liked it, and it's even if where your tank is positioned, it's on the same level with ADA Solar and also with the Max Light. There, the Master Pro is nearly the same height, so we will look aesthetically pleasing as well. Yeah. I think, yeah, this is good height, this way. So how long do you put it on? Oh. I normally go with eight, eight hours. You know, I mean, how long did you go 50%? 50% for at least one week, yeah, two weeks. And ob observe, you know, observe the plants, how they do. Yeah. If you see no issues, slowly increase. increase yeah, yeah. So go to 60, 70, you know, I'd end up with 100% maybe after one, month, you know, yeah. if, if you fancy, if everything's fine. I think it's always better to start with a little bit slower intensity, let the plants uh, adapt, you know. Yeah. I'm happy. Wonderful. Do you want me to take the mic off? <laughs>